Hello everybody and welcome to Dungeons and Drams. Today we're going to be talking about creating guilds for our worlds. Now obviously guilds can have a minor or a major impact. You could consider how their effect is on the economy or you could just have them as essentially a, an elaborate shopkeeper for your players. You could deal with reputation, you could have legendary status, you could even join the guild and start doing things for them that way. There's a million things we could do with our guild. So let's go into ChatGPT and have it help us figure this out. We're gonna do something a little bit different than we typically do while this is typing out on the screen. So I'm gonna say, I am a dungeon master playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. I want to create a guild for my world. What information do you need? Now this is, an interesting way to do this. My intent here with this with this channel and these videos is not just saying, here's how you create a city using ChatGPT. It's, do you need to do something for your D&D world? Let me teach you how to think about how to use ChatGPT in order to have it help you to do that thing. So in this case, yes, I have guilds in my world. I've thought them through. I've written a whole big bunch of stuff. Some of them have really elaborate lore. Some of them are basically just those glorified shopkeepers I mentioned. In this case, I'm gonna say, what information do you need? I don't know what ChatGPT wants from me in order to create a really good guild. So let's ask it what it wants. Now in this case, it's saying that I need to come up with a guild name and purpose. Okay, that's obvious. So I have something prepared. We're gonna build a monster hunter guild to start off with. Um, and I'm gonna call it the Fang and Feather. And it's, you know, a monster hunter guild. All right, leadership and hierarchy. I don't care. I want it to come up with it for me. Who leads the guild? Is there a council or single leader or democratic system? How is the hierarchy structured within the guild? I'm going to have it come up with that. But in general, Monster Hunter Guild, I like the idea of there being like one or two people who are in charge of handing out assignments. But other than that, everybody else is just kind of part of the guild. And, you know, the status of your kills will carry the weight of your status rather than having titles. So I'm really going to think like two, maybe three different levels. Membership. What are the requirements for joining the guild? Are there any special rituals, tests, or qualifications needed? Well, it seems pretty obvious that maybe to join the guild, you have to do some sort of low-level monster hunt. Okay, we'll, we'll figure out what it wants. Location and headquarters. Where is the guild located? Describe the headquarters or main meeting place. Is it a hidden fortress, a lavish mansion, or a discreet tavern, or something else? Now, in my world, what I have with the Fang and Feather is there's a location in every major city and village. And these are going to either have, like, you know, huge bounties, or it might just be a local problem. So it's going to vary where this guild is. Maybe it's a house. Maybe it's, like, a really large palace kind of thing in a city palace is the wrong word but you know what i mean like a, an elaborate building um activities and operations what kind of activities does the guild engage in okay uh are they mostly legal illegal or a mix of both i'm going to say they're always going to be legal in this case rivals and allies does the guild have any notable allies or rivals um well, i'll have to think about that one maybe maybe like a uh, eco terrorists <laughs> that don't want you to be killing all these monsters uh, unique features and secrets. What makes your guild stand out? Are there any unique traditions, magical items, or secret knowledge that the guild possesses? Okay. Role in your world. How does the guild fit into the larger world? Is it well known and influential? In this case, yes, it would be. NPCs and characters. Who are some notable members or characters associated with the guild? It's going to tell us. And then quests and adventures. What type of quests or adventures originate from this guild? Okay. So it says feel free to provide as much detail as you'd like on these points or any other elements you think are important for your guild. That means it's going to probably fill in the stuff I don't fill in. So give me a sec. I'm going to type a whole bunch of stuff and then we'll come right back. So I got a little carried away. I'll go through this as quickly as I can. So the guild name is the Fang and Feather and it's a monster hunting guild. I would like there to be a delegated member at each location that's responsible for managing assignments. By the way, this will all be in the description. Everyone else will just be a member and their own deeds will establish an organic ranking system within the guild. An initial hunt is required to join the guild. There will be a location within each major city and village within the world. These handle everything from legendary creatures like dragons to smaller village problems like a werewolf or blights. The activities will be legal. I would like there to be rivals, probably some sort of nature lovers who don't want you to kill the monsters, figuring they, uh, they're part of the natural order. I would like you to get creative with, um, so number seven was unique features and secrets. I would like you to get creative with this one. I definitely want a ritual for new members. I also want there to be some magical weapons that can be earned as part of certain hunts. Uh, the guild is very known, well known and respected. I want them to come up with NPCs that are legendary within the guild um, or notable. And now this is the, the one I like. 
So this is something that we're going to elaborate on further into this episode. Uh, for quests and adventures, I will eventually need a list of monster, monster hunts. I will tell you the name of the town or city, the type of location the town or city is in, and I would like you to come up with bounties for various monsters in the area. These bounties should have backstory of why the monster is wanted, what it has done to earn its reputation, and we will elaborate on these bounties to create an adventure. This should give it everything that it needs, and it's taking a little bit of uh, time to think. It's actually even saying that I've given it a pretty good foundation, which I agree. I think that just generally what I've already put here is a good base for a guild, but you do need a lot more detail. So this is going to take a little bit to come out, so we'll come back when it's done. So most of what this did was reiterate what I came up with and then also elaborate a little bit. So it goes into purpose, structure, membership, um, and location, so as well as activities. All of these were what I specified. It's just kind of making it look neat. So let's go rivals and allies. So there's Nature's Guardians, a rival faction that believes monsters are part of the natural order and should be protected or relocated rather than killed. So even that gave a little bit more. I like the, the captured and relocated rather than just saying, no, you're bad for killing these. Like they also kind of get that maybe these creatures don't belong where they can hurt people. And they're, that that's good. I like it because it's not directly in opposition and it even could lend itself to working together. Um, maybe there does come a point where, where you're working with your rivals to really deal with a, a large threat. Uh, very cool. So unique features and rituals, initiation ritual, new members participate in a ceremonial hunt, followed by a rite involving a symbolic feather and fang, representing their commitment to balance nature and civilization. So I'm going to elaborate on that because I, if I were to host uh, an actual rite within the game, I'd want to know what that looks like. I don't want it to just be... Here's a fang, here's a feather, welcome to the club. I want it to be something cooler. So we're gonna elaborate on that a little bit. Magical weapons, just reiterates what I said. Um, widely known and respected, okay, cool. Notable NPCs. Now this is gonna be different in every city that you go to, but here is an example of probably one of the larger ones. Maybe you pick a city and put this in there. So you have Eldrick the Steadfast. He's a seasoned hunter and leader of the main guild hall, known for his unwavering bravery. And we could use our NPC definitions that I've done in a different video in order to elaborate on any one of these, so I won't do that here in this video. Leah Willowshade, a skilled ranger and tactician, often disagrees with the kill-first approach advocating for understanding monster behavior. So she's coming at it from more of a, let's figure out how we can stop monsters from being a problem by understanding them rather than just kill everything you see. I like that. Grumpf Ironhide, a dwarven blacksmith in the guild crafting and repairing specialized monster hunting gear. Cool, you could make him a real character, I like that. And then Sylvie Moonbeam, a young enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic apprentice eager to prove herself in the guild. Okay, so she's got a story and we could figure out what that is. For the monster hunts, for each hunt you'll provide the name of the town or city, its location, desired monster types, I'll create boundaries complete with backstory and details to shape adventures. With this framework, Fang and Feather is poised to blah 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 blah. Okay, so... First, let's go into the initiation rite, and then I'm dying to get into the monster hunts. Could you describe in elaborate detail what the initiation ritual would be? Include some dialogue, if appropriate. I thought that would be interesting. Okay, I really like this. It's kind of giving me the companions vibe from Skyrim. Um, so I won't read all of this because it's it's a bit long. But basically, the, the ritual takes place in a specially designated area within the guild's main hall known as the Circle of Valor. Um, there's a stone in the middle of the room, and all of the uh, guild members gather around along with the initiative initiates and the person that is in charge of this particular one, let's go with Eldrick the Steadfast, comes over and will give a speech basically um and it does give you some of these things to say brave hunters you stand here having proven your valor and skill the path of the fang and feather is not one of mere strength but of understanding the delicate balance between mankind and the wild you are the shield against the darkness and the sword against the monstrous that's actually pretty good i i like that a lot it feels a little campy but it also totally feels like something i would write <laughs> so i like it um they present to you a small box with a fang and a feather in it. It says, um, you know, the feather represents being uh, swift to act like a like a falcon. And then the fang is your uh, willingness to attack like the wolf, you know, something like that. So um, then he talks about how you need to maintain the balance and blah, blah, blah. Each initiate then briefly recounts their first successful hunt. Now, I would actually expand upon this. I'm going to steal a little bit of a concept from the Dungeon Dudes, if you've watched them at all. Um, they have a live play series, and they do this thing. I forget what they called it, but basically it was 
you need to tell the story of your monster hunt in the most outlandish way, like really take a chance to brag and make it sound incredible. And I love that idea. I think that could work in here really, really well. Um, so uh, basically you take a minute and you recount the hunt. You talk about how you killed them. And actually I, I did have this happen in my own game um, probably almost two years ago at this point where the first monster that my players had to hunt was an owl bear. And at the end they had to tell of the story of how they killed the owl bear. And it was kind of fun watching the players talk kind of with each other and be like, you know, like we, we attacked the owl bear and, and it tackled me, but then I stabbed it and it ended up falling off a cliff into a big thing of water and blah, 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 blah. Like it was fun to listen to. And I think the players will get into it. All right. Welcoming the new members, concluding the ritual Eldrick announces by the power vested in me and the legacy of our guild. I welcome you as brothers and sisters of the fang and feather. May your hunts be true and your actions just, um, again, little campy, but whatever it's D and D it's fun. All right. Uh, and then the ceremony transitions into a feast with guild members sharing stories, offering advice, and celebrating the new additions of their ranks. So this is great for a Monster Hunter guild. Now let's go into that first hunt. In true fantasy fashion, I'm going to create a town that is absolutely geologically not likely. <laughs> so could you design the first hunt for me? I will have four level three players. The village is called Northbury. To the north is a snowy forest. To the south, an expansive plainland. To the west is a forest with a massive cliff face on the edge of the ocean. To the east is a road leading to the continent's main city. So, seems like a actually pretty nice location. You got some nice forest, you got a cliffside with the ocean, you got a plane, like it sounds pretty good. For our first hunt, we're gonna be tracking and killing and returning. So, uh, it describes Northbury. So it says a quaint snow dusted village known for its hearty welcoming folk surrounded by a snowy forest to the north, expansive plains to the south, a dense forest to, and a towering cliff facing the ocean to the west and a well-traveled road to the east leading to the continent's main city. So it understands it. Now this is the monster, the Gloomfang Warg. Its habitat is uh, recently sighted in the snowy forest north of Northbury. Okay, so we're going to the north. Appearance, a large shadowy warg with icy blue eyes and dark fur that seems to absorb light, known for its cunning and ferocity. Abilities, exceptional stealth in snowy environments, sharp claws, and a chilling howl that can disorient its prey. So that's what you get from the Monster Hunter Guild. It, it, like, I like this. Rather than just being like, oh, roll a nature check to know what you know about wargs. Now you've got somebody saying, like, you need to be careful. This thing's howl might disorient you. I love it. All right, so here's your briefing. Eldrick the Steadfast gathers the party in the local guild hall. A creature, the Gloomfang War Warg, preys upon Northbury's outskirts. Its howls chill the very soul, and its attacks leave naught but frost and fear. Your task, track this beast and end its reign of terror. Remember, use the environment to your advantage and beware the warg's cunning. So now he's kind of briefing you on this concept of, hey, like, use your environment. And and as a player, if I knew anything about this guild and what that initiation right looks like, I'm thinking, okay, I want to make this cool so I have a really good story to tell when I, after I've killed this warg. So I'm going to be, like, finding pine boughs and making, like, a ghillie suit out of it, you know, or whatever. All right, so adventure outline. So we have five different parts of this uh, adventure. We are going to gather some information. You can talk to villagers. Um, and if you wanted to, you could prompt chat GPT to give you those villagers and what information they know and even what you need to roll to get that information if you want to. Um, so that's something for you to do at a later time. The players can talk to the villagers, um, learn about its attack. They learn about its stealthy nature and chilling howl. A local hunter mentions seeing unusual tracks in the northern forest and hearing eerie howls at night. Okay, so there's your, there's your hint at where it is. Tracking the beast. Players must navigate the snowy forest using survival skills to track the warg. They may encounter other wildlife, some possibly spooked or aggressive due to the warg's presence. They find a half-frozen carcass of a deer, a sign of the warg's recent hunt. Ambush in the snow. As they track the beast, the party is ambushed by the Gloomfang warg. Its howl may disorient them, making the battle challenging. Players must use strategy and the environment, such as using the trees for cover or setting traps to gain an advantage. Confronting the warg. The final confrontation occurs in a clearing where the warg attempts to use its stealth and speed. Clever tactics and teamwork will be key to defeating it. A tense and cinematic battle ensues, testing the player's combat skills and ability to work together. So this is on you to make it cool. You could certainly ask, um, you know, how can I make this cinematic? What kind of, you know, um, how, how could I emote what this warg is like? Give me some descriptors, etc., etc. Okay, 
Return in celebration. With the beast defeated, the players return to Northbury where grateful villagers and Eldrick await. Eldrick commends them for their bravery and skill, officially welcoming them into the Fang and Feather with the respect of the villagers and fellow guild members. Cool. Now here's your rewards. Guild recognition, okay. Uh, monetary reward, um, you get some some coins, and a special item, a cloak made from the fur of the Gloomfang Warg, granting the wearer increased stealth in snowy environments. Totally appropriate, I love that. Um, so there's your first hunt. Now we could go ahead and do multiple of these, and I frankly, I kind of want to, but I also, also don't want this video to be 40 minutes long. So I would encourage you to go ahead and go create your own guild, go create some some quest hooks and you know do something like a alchemist guild that's going to look completely different than this monster hunter guild in fact i might actually do that so if you want to see me do other kinds of guilds and come up with other concepts then let me know um tell me what you want me to create and i'll do videos on them it sounds like fun i also have a list of ideas but i'm always looking for new ones so if there's something that you'd like me to go over in a video like this let me know in the comments and i'll make it happen all right thank you for joining me here on dungeons and drams and i hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers.